Welcome to Sickbaggers YouTube channel. I'm Steve. Today we're going to be finally doing the exhaust on the 2015 Heritage over here. So if you watched the last video that we did on the 2015 Heritage, I talked about a couple of mistakes that I made during the pandemic. It was really hard to get a couple of the parts that I wanted to finish this build and uh, handlebars was one of them and exhaust was the other one. I really wanted to see what it was going to look like so I opted to just buy some really cheap exhaust that were fishtails and those are actually I think 41 or 42 inches long and that was fine but i just really wanted to see what it would look like and i was kind of hoping that the cheaper exhaust would work out for me and it just didn't so my advice to you is wait don't cheap out on flea bay exhaust because i was actually shooting the video for that and i got everything pretty well buttoned up and towards the end is that's when the issue started they have a bolt on fishtails on the end so it's kind of cool because you could change the tips or just take the fishtails off if you wanted to but the holes that were drilled in for the fishtails were not drilled in straight they were crooked so i had one going this way and one going this way right away when i got everything out of the box i could completely tell the difference between the flea bay exhaust i got and this basani exhaust just simply in weight and in finish on these pipes and you know there's a significant difference in price as well but you know basani's been around for a long time and i could pretty well guarantee these are going to fit and look a lot better than the flea bay ones i got on there you're going to save a little money with those but you're going to fight them till the end and then i hope your fishtails are straight because mine are not so you're going to get all the hardware in the box the worm clamps were also in this bag but i cut it open to get the uh, paperwork out of it worm clamps are just for your heat shields and then of course three new clamps here and then the uh, bolts and bung converters and all that's all in here and we'll go over all that as we're installing them now before you get started on this make sure to pick up a set of gaskets i will put a link to a set of these gaskets down in the description as well but make sure you have those on hand so let's Let's get the camera over to the bike and let's get this junk off and get the Basanis on. So, so if you're working with stock exhaust, more than likely it's all going to be on the right hand side of the bike. Now we're taking off the fishtails and putting on fishtails. So a lot of the stuff I've already done, but you can see that this pipe comes out of the rear jug and it's got this crazy hook and it comes out and goes down this side of the bike, which looks much better when you're doing dual exhaust on a soft tail. If you're just taking your stock exhaust off, stay on the right side of the bike. You can pretty well look in there and see how the slip-ons are on. Get those off first and then work your way up here to the top. So there's just going to be a couple of clamps holding the actual slip-ons on. Go ahead and get those off and then work your way to the front and you'll see some probably a couple of hanger brackets on the side that you're going to need to remove and then get up to your jugs to get those um, off the exhaust ports up there. So uh, the first thing we're going to do though is come back here to the fishtails and get these old fishtails off which would be kind of the same as you taking the slip-ons off on your stock bike now these have hanger brackets down here on the side that uh, two bolts holding it on with a big bracket that comes back and we'll actually be replacing that with the basani one as well but with mine right now we're going to grab a 12 and get back here and get these off the hanger then we can take the slip on off the actual header Then up here on the header clamp, we just have a 10 millimeter clamp. So you'll just have to check your bike to see what yours has, but you're just gonna loosen that clamp. And now we should be able to slide this off fairly easy. So just save a little bit of time. I'm just gonna repeat that process on the other side. Now we're on this side of the bike, we're gonna go ahead and get the heat shields off. It's just gonna be standard worm clamps that hold your heat shields on, even on your uh, stock exhaust. Just gonna find the back side of the worm clamps and go ahead and completely undo these so we got those off we're gonna go ahead and pull the heat shield off get it out of the way now this inner one here you can get to it this back side over here you may have to get in there with a wrench and take that one off you still got your o2 sensor is connected and if you follow that line right down here underneath the master cylinder underneath the frame you'll feel a plug right there i really can't get the camera in there to show you but it's a very short line it's literally right here on the inside of the frame we're just going to reach in there and we're going to disconnect that and then we can pull that plug up through pull the wires up out of the way and give yourself enough room to get that through and it's just a plug that looks like that it's just a four pin molex connector so that side's ready to come off we're going to take this set it down here on the table for now and then we're going to go to the other side and get that one removed we get that one off 
always handy to have a little magnet around to fish out the nuts that we drop. So this one technically is loose, but we need to go to the other side. Now, like I said, if you're doing a stock setup and you're taking your stock exhaust off, you would generally just stay on that side of the bike. When you release that header, make sure once again, you have that O2 sensor over there. So follow that line down and get that unplugged. Now on this side, we're gonna have to take our spark plug wires off here. We'll get those out of the way. Once again, on this side, gonna go ahead and remove my worm clamps. Go ahead and get this cover off so we can see a little bit better of what we're doing get that side off now your o2 sensor for that jug is going to come off that back side there and go up and right here underneath the seat you got this black plug right here so we're going to disconnect that now this one isn't hard to fish out but you have to take the battery out and all that good stuff i make sure to go ahead and disconnect it but i'll actually go over there on that side of the bike and when i put the new pipe in i'll put the port in and leave the wire in here and then i disconnect it so when i'm wrenching it onto the pipe this will turn if it needs to it's not tied down to this but just go ahead and disconnect it and then we'll go to the other side of the bike and we'll get that pulled out so on this year bikes you have your coil pack right here and you got a coil bracket that goes pretty much from the center of your frame straight down and it has a bolt down at the bottom on the other side in order to get this moved so we can get that crossover pipe in and out we need to remove this coil pack that's why we took the spark plug wires off and then we need to just slide that bracket over. But down here on the bottom of this chrome piece, you're gonna have an eight millimeter screw. So we're gonna get down here, we're gonna loosen this screw, hopefully get it out by hand. We don't wanna drop it down in the transmission. I'm gonna grab a towel and put over this because I know me, big clumsy fingers, I'll end up dropping that stupid screw. So if it falls, it'll fall on that towel now. And get in there with our eight and take this little screw out now we can pop this off the back roll it forward okay now we can just pull this over and out of the way and now you can really see the bracket right so it's loose at the bottom because i've taken that bolt out the bottom it's going to come out the other side of the bike we're gonna loosen this bolt up here at the top. I remember this being a real pain in the butt last time we did this. So what I'm gonna do is just go in here with my wrench and I'm gonna go ahead and bust that bung loose. I can't get that bracket out because the bung's in the way. I'm supposed to take the bracket out to get this pipe out, vice versa. It's just a vicious circle that I'm going in here and I'm wasting a lot of time. And I know I can get to this bung right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take it out. Then I can just slide this pipe out and I can get that bracket out of the way. We've got that O2 sensor out now, so hopefully we can just go to this side and get this crazy thing out of here. Now, like I said, if you've got stock exhaust, you don't have to worry about that. It's just a little puzzle that you have to work to get that out, see? So there's our bracket. It's a good time to get all that cleaned up get ready to put back in so this is the new Bassani pipe that we that little crossover pipe that goes back in there like that one we just pulled out if you can look at this you can see this section right here is kind of pressed flat so the other one I pulled out was pretty round and the bung hole itself for the O2 sensor was actually right down here right around where that brace was uh, with this one it's right up here in this corner so I'm thinking that with this style exhaust, we probably don't need to have that bracket out, that brace that's in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it back in and see if we can't slip this through with that in there. I'm gonna do a little test fitting for just a second, see if I can't slip this through there and get that bung screwed in, and uh, we'll go from there. So I put the bracket back in and fed this through and everything fit fine without removing that bracket. If you go right down here to the bottom, you can sneak that in just like that, and it's gonna come out the other side, and we got plenty of room to get it onto the back of the jug. So from here, I'll pull that out, but I did just wanna show you with that, I only had to remove that bracket, remember, just to get the old uh, fishtails off. So it's gonna be the same for the front and the rear. We'll do the front one just because I can get the camera in there a lot easier, but I just use a little small screwdriver like this with a hook on it, and I'm gonna go in and just try to grab that old gasket it's going to poke it down in there 
grab that gasket and start pulling it out. You want to kind of try to stay away from buttering up the edge of the jug. And sometimes these come right out and sometimes you pretty well destroy them trying to get them out. But you can go around it and just kind of pick this old gasket out. And once you get enough of it out, it should just come all the way the rest of the way out. Just going to keep picking at it until I get it out. And this one, I've had them come out. Usually they come out a heck of a lot easier than this one. That one, there we go. So you can see how much I actually buttered it up before it actually released out of there. When we put the new one in, you'll see that the... You'll see that the gasket is like a thick flat spot on one side and it's kind of concaved on the other. So we want to make sure that this flat back side goes up against the jug and the concave part is this way. So as you can see, right there I've got it set right down into place. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the rear. So remember on the front O2 sensor, instead of pulling the battery out and pulling all that out, we left that in there. And we can put it right back in the exact same way, or you can take the time to pull all that stuff out. So on the table over here, we're just going to do the front one, because the rear one's still on the bike. Inside your bag, you'll have some adapters that you may or may not need, depending on what O2 sensors you have in your bike. But you'll have some that look just like this. There'll be some plugs, like that. And there'll be two adapters. I just need to get a little anti-seize on this one and get this one screwed in. We'll anti-seize the rear one while we're doing it on a table. I'll take a glove and just a little bit like this. And we're going to run it around the edge. We want to make sure that we're not getting it on the actual sensor that's in there. Right? So that's all it took. But you don't want to do that with your finger. Just kind of smear it around with the paper towel. Make sure we got it all the way around. Take a clean set of the paper towel. Make sure we clean off that actual sensor. We're going to take our three quarter inch wrench and we're just going to tighten that down. There is torque specs for it, but unless you have a side cutout socket to put on there, don't worry about it. It's, it's not science on this. So just take your three quarter inch and snug it down. We're going to get the old pipe up here real quick. And uh, you can take a flathead screwdriver and do this or just get these kind of uh, pliers like this. They work super handy for pulling this little ring off right here. It's like a, like a piston ring pliers. You can pick those up cheap on Amazon. Now you can get this off and take the chance of bending it or just use these. They're pretty cheap. I'll put a link down in the description down below. But uh, you just put them on just like that and then you can squeeze and pull that snap ring right off. We need this here to put back on the new one. You wanna make sure the snap ring side is up facing the engine, right? So we're just gonna put that right back on, just like that. So this pipe here is ready to put on the bike. But we're gonna bring this up into place. I put a towel over this in case I drop one of those nuts. I don't wanna to have to fish it out from around uh, the, the bottom down there. So I'm gonna bring this up into place and set it right over that gasket we just installed. We're gonna spin this guy into place, and get it right over the nuts there, or over the bolts, and hopefully that'll stay just like that while I get this started. And pardon me if I gotta get my head in here for just a second to get this nut. You don't wanna cross thread it, so take your time. Set a little bit of an angle so it's hard to get that in there and get it started straight. Comes off easier than it goes on, but I think I got it started. The biggest thing is with these is making sure you don't have these cross-threaded. So you wanna get a few threads on it. If you get a few threads on it and it stops, it's, it's cross-threaded. So back it off, take your time, make sure that you get it on there straight. But once you get them started, and you know they're not cross-threaded, go ahead and go back and forth all right just so we got a few threads on them we don't want to we want to kind of leave everything loose where we can move this and we'll tighten everything up at the end so we're going to do the same thing with this pipe we're going to take our ring off take our seal off put it back on here put our ring back on and get ready to install on the bike 
So I'm just going to reach through on this side, get our O2 sensor if I can find it, and I'm going to poke it through over the top of the transmission and now have it come out this side. Now I went ahead and put a little bit of uh, anti-seize on it, but you can see right here it's still plugged in, coming out down here. I go ahead, sneak this pipe through so we can get it closer over here and we'll go ahead and install the bung adapter. Now, because this isn't going to twist like it would on the table, I will go ahead and pre kind of twist this to the right. And that way, when I put it in, it's coming back to its neutral position. And we don't have to worry about this backing out and causing an exhaust leak later on down the road. And you can kind of push and pull on this a little bit and it will untwist up here at the top if you got too much on it. But we're going to take our three quarter and get in here, tighten this down. Now we have that installed. We've got this ready. We've got our new gasket in there. So we're going to slide this up into place. Going out the other side. Same thing on this one. Don't tighten it all the way down. We just want to get a few threads on it. Same thing on this one. We just want to get a few threads on it just to kind of hold it in place. We don't want to tighten anything down yet. So now we got that on. We're going to come back here and remove our old hanger brackets. So over here on the table, we've got the right side fishtail and we've got our bracket. This goes on very easy. You've got some bolts in here, some split washers, flat washers, and nuts. You're going to set this up into place. So if your fishtail is facing up, the bracket piece will be facing down. Uh, we'll run our bolt from the back side. We'll put a flat washer, a split washer, and a nut. Same thing up here, bolt, flat washer through the back side, flat washer, split washer, and a nut. So inside your package, you're gonna have a couple of clamps. You're gonna have a couple of small ones like this and one larger Torco clamp. That's gonna be for the other side at the top. So your two small ones are gonna be for your slip-on. We're gonna take our pipe with our loose bracket on here. We're gonna slide this into place. And actually, and this is why we left the header loose up there at the engine so we can kind of move everything. We're gonna slide this on. Slide it up until those holes line up with the bolt holes in the frame. Now, if you've never had nothing down here, those two bolt holes that are in the frame right there may have plastic plugs in them. You're gonna have to pull those out. And then you have two styles of spacers. You got short ones, and these are the longer ones. Your short ones are just gonna be probably about a quarter of this one, and the longer bolts. Of course, a little blue Loctite on those bolts. We're gonna put it a flat washer on there first, put it through, pull it out, put our spacer on the back side. And then go ahead and get that started in that hole, that front hole. Same thing on this side, a little blue Loctite again. Slide the spacer up into place, go through. You may have to move it around just a little bit to get the bolt started. That's why it's important to leave all of this stuff loose until you get everything installed. Now we can slide the clamp back into place. So we're gonna take our ratchet and run these brackets all the way in. Now, once again, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my old brackets. Like I said, stock, you won't have these. So like I was saying earlier, you had two different size clamps. I can actually show you now. It's a small one for the slip-on and the Torco clamp is the larger one. And that's gonna go up here for your down pipe. We've got the big clamp on top of that. So we're gonna slide this up into place. This is our down pipe. I'm gonna slide that on. I'm just gonna leave it loose for now. Same as the rest. We're gonna come back here. We have our other hanger bracket that comes off the back already installed. Now on this side, like I said, we've got the shorter bolts and the smaller spacers that go in here. So we're gonna bring this up into place, slide it on over our down pipe, get those holes lined up a little bit. Once again, a little blue Loctite on those, whoa, enough for uh, enough for both bolts. Well, we'll share that a lot. We go through that back side, through that spacer. Go ahead and pull this up into place. Slide that slip on on. Go ahead and get that front one started. Get our bolt through. Slip our spacer in there. Lift up on it just a tad. And that one started. Now they're installed, all we need to do is make sure everything is straight, everything is where it needs to be, and start tightening it down.
so with the Bassanis, you definitely don't have to worry about taking off that uh, coil pack bracket in the middle right there. That pipe slid right through there. And if you watch that part of the video where I had to take all that stuff off, it was only because I had to get the cheap stuff off the bike and I actually had to pull that stuff off to get it installed. So I knew I had to take it off to get it out too. So if you're just doing stock bars or maybe a different style of cross under pipe, look in there and make sure that you don't have to take that bracket off, right? Make sure to jump over to Bassani's website because they have a ton of different exhausts over there. Like I said, and they have a bunch of different lengths of this one as well. They have pictures over there that show you the different lengths on the bike so you can tell which ones that you wanted. Now, unfortunately, I just did all of this and I'm not gonna be able to give you a sound bite on here. There are other videos on YouTube that give you a sound bite on these pipes. But with what I've got going on in the next video, the old tank here, still bone dry. And I wanna keep it that way. I don't wanna fuel this bike up and fire it up just to do a sound clip and then have to deal with all that fuel. So make sure you stay tuned to Sick Baggers YouTube channel because we still have a couple of more videos to get done on this bike. But we're a lot further now that we got the uh, Wings Customs two inch eight handlebars. If you didn't see that video, make sure to check out that, that two inch handlebar are absolutely sick. Check out the homepage on the channel. So we've got a soft tail playlist that shows you everything that we've done to this bike. And like I said, make sure to jump over to Bassani's website if you're interested in getting a set of these pipes. They sound amazing. And I promise you, after we do the next install on this bike, I will put fuel back in it and I will fire it up. So you'll have to watch that video to actually hear what these sound like. Apologize again about that. Usually I end my exhaust videos with, uh, you know, some cold starts and some dry buys and stuff like that. And unfortunately, I just can't do that. If you have any questions on this install, you know the deal. Comment section down below. I'll try to help you the best I can. I'm going to get out of here and get myself cleaned up. I hope to see you in the next video. But until then, as always, be safe. Keep your knees in the breeze. Hey, thanks for stopping by and checking out our videos today. If you like what you see, make sure you hit that like button, hit the little subscribe button popping up over here. If you want to check out more of our content, I've got two videos right here that'll get you started. Not really going to say anything else, just click one of those videos and take you to another video.